Hi, I'm Jenny Shampo, the director of the Book of Mormon Art Catalog, and I'm here today with Daniel Becerra. Welcome. Thanks. Daniel is an assistant professor of ancient scripture at Brigham Young University and a scholar of early Christianity. His research focuses on moral formation in early Christian literature and in Latter-day Saint scripture. Today we're looking um, at the scriptures in Mosiah, chapters 4 through 6, and the artwork is by Stephanie K. Northrup. It's called Are We Not All Beggars? This is from 2012. Um, Daniel, can you first tell us what's the context of these scriptures in Mosiah that the artwork is based on? Yeah, so it comes in the, the context of Mosiah 2 through 6, which essentially it's King Benjamin's farewell speech. So he, he realizes he's getting a little bit older. Uh, he's going to die soon. Uh, he's thinking about the future of his people and what he can best tell them before he you know, moves on. Um, so he starts off by saying, you know, I love you guys. I've done all these things for you. Um, he teaches them a little bit about Jesus, and then he encourages them to act in certain ways um, before he, again, to, to act in ways that, that's in their best interest. And as he's kind of sharing these things with them, uh, some of them have a kind of a change of conscience. Uh, they're convicted in their hearts, and then they, they, uh, they want to do better. They ask how they can do better, and then King Benjamin gives them from some, uh, some instructions. Okay, and so um, the the title is "Are We Not All Beggars?" What mm. what does he say in there? What is that about? Yeah, so when King Benjamin is talking to them, he, he kind of makes three different points. The mm. first one is that he wants them to reflect on how great God is and how good God has been uh, in their lives and specifically in the lives of their ancestors as well. The second thing he wants them to understand is how that they are nothing and unworthy and you know like the dust mm -hmm. of the earth. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the third thing is that he, as they understand this, he wants them, he wants it to have kind of ethical implications, which is to say, I want you to internalize this idea that God is great and you're not, and I want that to be reflected in certain ways. Uh -huh. um, and the ways in which he wants that to be reflected are in verses 19 through 21. Can I, can I read yeah, those? Yeah, is this him? chapter four? Chapter four, yeah. Okay. So he said, behold, uh, are we not all beggars? Do we not all depend upon the same being? And again, this is this idea that you're unworthy creatures, that you're nothing, and that we're all mm -hmm. beggars. Uh, do we not all depend on the same being, even God, for all the substance we have, for both food and raiment, and for gold and for silver, and for all the riches which we have of every kind? And behold, even at this time, you have been calling on his name and begging for a remission of your sins. And, he has, and has he suffered that you have begged in vain? Nay, he has poured out his spirit upon you and has caused that your heart should be filled with joy and has caused that your mouth should be stopped that you could not find utterance. So exceedingly great was your joy. Hmm. And now, if God has created you on whom you are dependent for your lives and for all that you have and are, and if he doth grant unto you whatsoever you ask that is right in faith, believing ye shall receive, oh then how ought ye to impart of the substance that you have one to another? So that's kind of the end all, the, the, the goal that he wants to achieve. You recognize that you're beggars, uh, and that's intended to translate into the fact that when you recognize your own nothingness, your own woundedness, your own neediness, you're more inclined to kind of reach out to others in the same situation. Mm -hmm. So in those scriptures, I mentioned the phrase uh, about pouring out your spirit, and mm -hmm. I see some here kind of visualize this mm -hmm. idea of something being poured out and captured. Yeah. I know in, in your brief theological introduction book that you did with the Maxwell Institute mm -hmm. on third and fourth Nephi, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You talk about this idea of how God's love is poured out and to really have God's love isn't something we can just find on yeah. our own. Can you mm -hmm. talk more about that? Yeah, it's just uh, this idea that uh, the, the people that God wants us to be, we can't do that by ourselves, and He doesn't expect us to muster all of the virtue and desire and love and mm -hmm. kindness that we need uh, to be good disciples on our own. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when, when love is talked about in the scriptures, it's often something that's poured into other people from mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that they generate on their own. And I think we get a sense of that uh, here. And one of the things I like about the picture here is uh, the first thing is that this idea of abundance and generosity, like I'm not sure that all of those things, once they land in the little cups that the people have, that they can contain it, right? Oh. Uh, so there's a sense in which God's going to give more than maybe we can, we can even, you know, uh, we can even use. Uh, he gives in abundance. Uh, so to speak, and like the falling and the fact that it keeps, it's not just one thing, like it's yeah. iterative, like he keeps oh, giving yeah. it. And, uh -huh. um, so it's this idea that God continually uh, sustains us. I like that. I yeah. haven't thought about that symbolism of that they're going to get more than they can yeah, yeah, yeah. use themselves. And mm -hmm. 
and that God is blessing us abundantly, and then mm. maybe they can use that also yeah. to bless other people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's talk about how I see two two figures, kind of this mirror image. Mm. Why is that important? I mean, it could have just been one panel. What what difference does it make to have two? Yeah. So part of the rhetorical aim, I think, of Benjamin's sermon is to help level the playing field, like, yeah. um, which is to say, he wants people to 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 understand that God is not a respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. That, you know, I think of, of Paul or Nephi's language that in God there, in Christ there is neither male nor female, nor slave nor free, then nor black nor white. Right. So I think that's the kind of thinking that God wants to inform how they understand themselves. And by mm -hmm. the abstractness, I feel like levels the playing field in the sense that there is no, no ver, uh, visible kind of distinction between those two individuals. They're the same. Mm -hmm. And even in their sameness, the, the, the lack of definition in things, like the, they're not much. Mm -hmm. uh, and you think about the Nephite society, one of the problems that they have is the, their pride, right? The assumption that they're superior, mm -hmm. they're superior to other people. Mm -hmm. um, and even in the Latter Saint tradition, we have this kind of idea that, you know, God's people that they're the light of the world, they're the salt of the earth, and yeah. that kind of rhetoric mm -hmm. uh, of chosenness can have the effect of, uh, you know, us mistaking blessedness or chosenness for betterness and superiority. So I think mm -hmm. uh, with this abstraction, um, it, it kind of pushes back against that idea that mm -hmm. even as a person receives blessings from God, that doesn't make them superior in any way to another mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. I like that you mentioned the abstraction here because mm -hmm. that is so unique or it's not typical in yeah. our Latter-day Saint visual right. culture. Mm -hmm. A lot of our art is narrative mm -hmm. and figurative and like clearly illustrates a specific moment from mm -hmm. the scriptures. Yeah. I mean, this is titled after a specific verse, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's a little more conceptual, but mm -hmm. it's, it's not showing King Benjamin talking. Right. It's showing more the idea yeah. that he's expressing here. Yeah. Um, I like that it's abstract. I feel like it leaves some room open for interpretation by the viewer and mm -hmm. that maybe you can see yourself in these figures. Yeah. Or like you were saying, maybe yeah. you can see other people. Right. Um, I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like we have, like we, uh, so I mean, there's two sides of the coin in terms of how King Benjamin wants, to, wants us to understand human nature. Like mm -hmm. we have this idea, obviously, that we're created by God, that God is pleased, he, he considers his creation good. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we're described as less than the dust of the earth, mm -hmm. right? And I think this is more of a, like, the, both of those ideas are important. We tend to err on the side of, you know, we have a primary song, I am a child of God, for example, mm -hmm. and you know, it's intended to inculcate this idea that we're, we're valued, we're loved, mm -hmm. uh, we're precious in God's sight, but we're also less than the dust of the earth. <laughs> uh, and this is the kind of uh, painting, I feel like, that helps us remember that. Yeah. Uh, the fact that we're so unmolded, unrefined, oh, the lack yeah. of the detail, it's like we're, we're, we're you know, literally created from the dust of the earth, and this helps us to recognize that that's part of our identity as well. Yeah, I do see that humility of yeah. their, their posture. Yeah, exactly. And, like, Humility and gratitude, also, mm. and like some, there's something essential about yeah. this this mm. need that they have to mm. be supported by God. Yeah, the idea that they're not standing up or looking up or anything like that, yeah. they're just like facing the ground, yeah. being a part of what they are. So I loved too in your book on Third and Fourth Nephi mm. that you talked about how Jesus didn't just minister to marginalized people, but he himself was a marginalized person mm -hmm. in in his mortal life. Yeah. Um, and, and I guess in a way, because this is abstract, you can mm. see yourself, you can see other people, maybe you can also see Jesus in the way that he humbled himself and yeah. he set that example. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I thought that was really beautiful, the way you talked about how Jesus can be our example of not only serving marginalized, but like mm. being marginalized himself yeah. and going through mm. that. Yeah, in the same way that we're encouraged to view ourselves not just as children of God, but less than the dust of the earth, so Jesus. You know, he's also he was the king of the cosmos, but he was also, you know, born in a little manger and, yeah. you know, he, he was poor and uh, an ethnic minority in the Roman Empire. And mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that part of his nature, I mean, it's a, it's a tool for solidarity with people who kind of relate to that kind of experience as well. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking all of a sudden I'm thinking of the scripture in um, uh, d during um, in Gethsemane mm -hmm. when he says, you know, like. Father, you know, remove this cup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you, you know, if you're, if you can't, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm thinking a little bit about that too. That this example of like accepting what's given. Yeah. Um, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. Um, and that I think Christ set a really great example that way too. That he, mm -hmm. uh, followed the path that was 
mm -hmm. the, the things that were given to him, even when it was hard, yeah. really hard, mm -hmm. right? And um, yeah, and even the oh, sorry to interrupt. No, no. Even, even the idea that I mean, it wasn't just for his own good that he received what God had mm -hmm. for him to do, right? It was for the good of other people mm -hmm. in the same way. Mm -hmm. Like we're we're intended to understand ourselves as beggars because that will give us more empathy and compassion and more willingness to reach out to others who are in the same situation. So oh, yeah. this kind of outward oriented and other centered uh, yeah. orientation that uh, yeah. I think the, 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 the sermon and this kind of painting gestures towards. Yeah, great. Anything else you want to add or personal reaction to? No, I just I just uh, love the idea of kind of not getting too big for our britches and yeah. just remembering that uh, you know we all come from the dust of the earth. We're yeah. all in the same boat and mm -hmm. um, allowing that to translate into lifting others up when we can. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me.